we can perhaps even develop these ideas further by looking at uh, particular objects and their distribution when they might have very specific meanings, such as uh, these elaborate belt sets, which are um, uh, essentially uh, uniforms for high-ranking officials and military um, people, which are in London are only found north of the Thames, not in Southwark. Um, and crossbow brooches, which are kind of a complementary style of brooch, which was worn up on the shoulder by the, of the same people. That relationship can be seen in graves and also on mosaics and other sorts of things, which again are found up here, not down here. So do, we have basically a situation where in the late Roman period, there aren't an awful lot of um, important people living down in Southwark compared to up in uh, Roman London. It's a controversial idea. <laughs> um, it's probably oversimplistic, but we can explore these issues. Um, co uh, conversely, what they do seem to be doing a lot of in, Roman, in the late Roman period is metalworking. Uh, and there's an interesting shift, again, by comparing the distributions of objects from the early Roman period, where crucibles are quite widely distributed over the city, to the late Roman period, where they're really concentrated in Southwark. So this is a small type of object, but by looking at it on a grand city-wide scale, perhaps this is telling us something about how this industry of metalworking is organised. You can do that incredi in incredible detail, um, as my colleagues uh, John Shepard and Angela Wardle did. And you can look at things like glass working waste, his moils from the end of blowing irons. If you look at it in, with great chronological resolution, you can actually practically see the glass workers move from site to site. So the earliest... Um, Glass working sites are here, in the centre of town. Then you, they get kind of shunted over to the edges of town. Uh, and you, there's this progressive uh, movement uh, through time as the, the industry seems to be being pushed out to the edges of town. Now, there's all sorts of ways you can interpret this. Is this gentrification in central Roman London? Um, is this glass workers wanting to be on the edge of town because their industry is a bit smelly and uh, they don't want to be too near houses um, or fire risk or is it because they want access to raw materials um, to that coming in from the edge of town. But you know, hopefully you can see that there is an incredible potential to take artefacts and to build up quite sophisticated models of how things are happening what things are happening in the city. Here are just a, a final example. I'm beginning to run slightly over. Um, this is the uh, distribution of Roman horseshoes. Now, you might think that trying to plot the distribution of things that move around um, attached to horses is a terrible idea, <laughs> and it probably is. Um, but hopefully you'll also agree with me that there is a big concentration of them up here at the top. In fact, over the half of the horseshoes from Roman London have been found in that part of town. Um, so what does that tell us? Well, these are temporary slip-on horseshoes, so does it mean that are used for metalled roads and things like that? So does it mean that horses aren't really coming into town there? It's only when they go out of the town, uh, sorry, that it's only when horses go out of town and go on the roads that they're putting these things on. Do you not have you know, an awful lot in the way of horse traffic in the center of town? Um, is it because horses are coming in from outdoors? We're getting a big stabling area here and the people and goods are continuing into town while as the, the horses aren't. Perhaps there are you know, congestion zones in the centre of Roman London. You're not allowed to bring your cart through here. It's an interesting idea. Anyway, there's lots and lots of uh, patterns that we could look at. Um, uh, I would say that we're reaching a really interesting point in the study of Roman London where we've amassed huge amounts of data, uh, a lot of which is complementary, and we really need to stick it all together. Hopefully I've kind of made you think that there is, there is worth in studying the artefacts from the city. Um, and, uh, and really, that's, that's kind of the next, next step of trying to tie it all up.